The Benry State Governor Samuel Autumn has lifted the ban on religious activities in churches and mosques across the state. Autumn, arising from expanded meeting of the State Executive Council and Action Committee on COVID-19, also directed civil servants in the state from levels 1 to 12 to resume work on June 1. He advised worship places to hold staggered worship sessions, adding that the issue of school resumption will be reviewed in the next 14 days. Joining us is the Chief Press Secretary to the Benue State Governor, Tev Akase. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, it's my pleasure to be with you again. Could you explain to us what uh, informs the decision to allow the reopening of religious centers um, in Benue State? Okay, so I was saying that uh, the decision to lift the ban on churches and mosques uh, was arrived as, at, as a result of the government's assessment of the situation. Uh, Benue has been able to uh, prevent this disease from escalating, from spreading to the state. That's why uh, we have one of the least uh, number of cases, and five cases in all, and uh, three only three remaining active. So uh, the government felt that since Benue has been on, on partial lockdown, uh, there is the need to uh, lift even more and, and make it 25% uh, lockdown instead of 50%. So that's why, but, but you remember that Governor Tom said, uh, churches which hold two worship sessions should increase the sessions to four. And that means target worshiping, so that you, you have a fewer number of worshippers in one worship session. How sure that, in that are way, you that there will be compliance? Because as it is, um, complying with social distancing is one of our major challenges. And you also know that some of these churches are pretty small. So how, are, how is the government, rather, going to monitor to ensure there is compliance when it comes to uh, physical distancing uh, yes, rather than state, trusting uh, on the people to follow the rule. You're right. There is a state action committee which has um, a task force on, on monitoring as well. And we expect the monitoring team to go around, uh, especially in the major towns of Benue, like Makudi, the, the state capital, Boko and Otupo, and see uh, what, how... Uh, the, 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 the religious groups like the, the, in the mosque, in the churches are, are complying. We, we believe that this is not all about, this, this won't benefit government really. It will benefit the people. So our people are health conscious. They, 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 largely, they have complied with the directives on COVID-19. And we expect nothing less from the, uh, the lifting of, of the ban on, on worshiping uh, in churches and mosques. Okay, before we go further, just a quick update on the current situation with figures, um, those that are infected, those that are active, those that have been, those that have been discharged as it stands today in Benue State. Okay, I didn't hear the middle part of that question, but I guess you are asking about the, uh, the number of cases we have and those uh, discharged. Yes, I am. Okay, you remember we, our index case has been discharged in Abuja. That's uh, our sister Susan Okwe. She has been discharged. And the second case as well, uh, uh, Edward Mange has also been discharged and certified free of COVID-19. So we have only three cases remaining uh, who are receiving treatment here in Makudi. We are believing that the three will also come out uh, uh, free. But anyway, so far, no deaths recorded uh, in COVID-19. All right. Um, tell us what are some of the observation uh, that your government had seen uh, in the course of um, trying to enforce uh, these um, restrictions and making sure that people are here. Has there been um, cases of human rights violation that has bothered uh, the government enough to take action? Well, um, let me say, uh, to a large extent, we've had difficulties trying to... Initially, many people didn't believe that COVID-19 is real until it got to Benue, and um, the campaigns intensified. The challenges we have now, some of them border on people trying to sneak into the state through bush paths and so on. 
uh, because the major roads have been have been blocked. Yet you find some people, especially from the Taraba axis and the Nasrawa axis of of, of the state. So it's it's been part of the challenge. And uh, well, on, on human rights abuses, our state has uh, has done exceedingly well in terms of trying to respect the rights of the people. The disclosure of people's uh, identities uh, has also been done within the, the, the precincts, within the, the parameters of the law. And we have variously quoted the sections of the law that give authorities the, the, uh, the mandate to reveal the identity. If you go to the National Health Act, Section 26.2e, it provides that uh, the identities of the people of a, of a, of a patient can be revealed if the disease the person the patient uh, is suffering from is deemed to be hazardous to be dangerous to public health so so we we have respected to a very large extent the human rights of benway people in general so how about the communal clashes we know that there are some communities that have been warring for a while has there been some sort of um quiet since the advent of COVID-19 and what is government doing to ensure that that is sustained? It's a very beautiful question you have come in there. The, the governor, Samuel Otom, uh, convened a meeting last, uh, I mean, on Monday, Monday this week. And that meeting brought together, brought to one table, stakeholders from uh, the, the Benway North East and West Senatorial Districts, and you are referring to the likes of uh, Senator George Akume, who is the Minister of Special Duties now, Se former Senate President uh, Dr. Yochi Ayu, former National Chairman of PDP and Senator uh, Barnabas Gemade, and the current Senator for Zombi, uh, Senator Okejev. All of them came together and said, we have had enough of the crisis. Our people need to, to, to stop what is going on. And... They spoke with one voice. They drank from the cup of unity. They drank from the cup of progress. And that is the progress of Ben State. And they said, if anyone is found to be responsible for, for making trouble, for causing crisis in any part of, of Tivland, in any part of Ben State, such a person should be arrested and prosecuted. And this coming Monday, the governor is convening a meeting for Zone C. That's the Idoma side, Idoma and Igede side of the state. They will come together and speak with one voice and look at Benue State as their own priority and resolve that the, the only thing that matters to them is Benue State and not their personal interests. So to a large extent, we are believing that from now going forward, all issues of internal crisis will be resolved amicably in Benue State. And, and traditional rulers were there, led by the chairman of the Benue State Council of Chiefs, uh, the, the, his, his Royal Majesty, the Totif, uh, Professor James Ayate. All right. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Teve Akase. Did I get that? Yes, you got it this time. Teve Akase <laughs> is my name, and uh, I really appreciate you. Thank you for coming on the news. Have a lovely day. You too.